Luis Alejo here with us to share the work being done to fight for ethnic studies in California. Supervisor Alejo was elected in June 2016 to represent District 1 in the Monterey County Board of Supervisors. He is a former high school teacher who comes from a long line of labor organizers. In fact, his grandparents worked with Cesar Chavez in farm workers' rights movements in the 1970s. After Supervisor Alejo speaks, we'll take a short break. Please welcome Luis Alejo for our second lightning talk of the day the fight for ethnic studies in California. It's all you, Luis. Perfect. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Monterey County Supervisor Luis Alejo. I'm a former state legislator, and former mayor of my hometown in Watsonville, California. I'm honored to be part of this National Youth Summit to talk about our fight for ethnic studies in California's high schools. And it's, uh, I was teed up perfectly by the panel that just spoke uh, about the youth organizers. I've been very impressed with a lot of the great work being done across our nation. But I'm a proud Latino elected official on the central coast of California, where I represent uh, thousands of hardworking farm workers here in the beautiful Salinas Valley. I'm excited to share organizing efforts because California next month will likely be the first state in the nation to approve the first ever state model curriculum on ethnic studies by the State Board of Education. And we also hope that our governor, Gavin Newsom, will be the first to sign a bill that will make a one semester ethnic studies course a high school graduation requirement this year. But I wanna say that it hasn't been easy. The road has been long and tough, but it has taken persistence and organizing by youth and teachers all across our state, school district by school district that has got us to a point where state legislators and our governor are on the cusp of making this a statewide reality in California high schools. Um, I wanted to start with this picture of these Latino high school students in East Los Angeles who in 1968 organized a walkout to demand educational justice, reforms, and the first Chicano studies courses. Next slide. It started with five high schools and it spread to many more and lasted for two weeks. It was our high school youth who first led this movement. Um, next slide. Later that year, university students at San Francisco State organized the third world liberation strike that lasted for months and later spread to UC Berkeley to demand the first ethnic studies courses at the college level, creating the first African-American and Native American API and, Ch and Chicano Latino uh, studies programs in the nation. So from the very beginning, it has been youth of color, communities of color that have been the driving force for demanding an education that includes the histories and the scholarship of our diverse communities. Next slide, please. Uh, many of us have personally benefited from ethnic studies I had no such courses offered while I was in high school. And in fact, it took my, I took my first ethnic studies course at the community college level and had a powerful impact on my life. Um, next slide. It opened my mind about the struggles of my community and others and how I can make social change happen. I got serious about my own education, community organizing and politics as a result. And this was me at um, age 19 doing grassroots organizing against an anti-immigrant proposition Prop 187 in California that was luckily struck down by our federal courts as unconstitutional. Um, next slide. But I also remember the activism of my grandfather who was a farm worker and who had been organizing with uh, labor leader Cesar Chavez to improve conditions for millions of farm workers in our agricultural fields. This photo here is my grandfather in the black hat standing behind Cesar Chavez at a rally of a thousand farm workers back in 1974. Next slide, please. And here's my grandfather um, working in Sacramento, again, trying to push policy at the statewide level to pass laws that would improve the lives of farm workers in California. Next slide. So after graduating from UC Berkeley and Harvard and UC Davis School of Law, I made an intentional decision after finishing my education to come back to my hometown to use my education to empower um, our, our local neighborhoods and families. Next slide. My first job was coming back to work as a young legal aid attorney. Um, and then I worked for, as a staff attorney for the Monterey County Superior Court, providing um, access to justice to thousands of low-income residents in my community. Next slide. I eventually joined politics and at the age of 36, I became the youngest state legislator on the central coast of California. Um, and during that time, I was proud to author numerous landmark pieces of legislation, including driver's license for immigrants, raising California's minimum wage, ending the use of Redskins at quote unquote Redskins as a mascot in all California public schools and also the first ethnic studies model curriculum. Next slide. 
So I, I, when I became a state legislator, I went back to a bill that I drafted when I was um, right out of law school. I was a capital intern in Sacramento, and I drafted the first bill on ethics studies for my boss, Assemblymember Manny Diaz. I got the bill to the governor's desk. Then it was Gray Davis who vetoed it then. But when I became a state legislator in 2014, I authored my own first bill. Um, but again, it got killed in the Appropriations Committee, which is, which is the committee that gives funding for bills in, in Sacramento. And... And then the following year, I filed again, but that bill also got vetoed by Governor Jerry Brown. And this is the article in the Los Angeles Times when the governor vetoed my legislation. Next slide. Why was I pushing for ethnic studies? We all know that today um, in our universities and colleges all across California and across the nation, we have some amazing PhD, master's and bachelor's degrees um, in ethnic studies. But at the high school level in California, we had less than 1% of our 1.7 million high school students who even had access to an ethnic studies course. And yet California was the most diverse student population in our public schools with over 76% being students of color. Next slide. So after several vetoes of my legislation, I decided I, had, I needed a different strategy. I began to uh, better organize with grassroots um, organizations and students and youth, in particular the Ethnic Studies Now Coalition who had organized to implement ethnic studies at the local level. They began organizing, not at the state level, but school by school, school district by school district in places like Los Angeles, San Francisco, Sacramento, San Diego, and even smaller cities like Salinas. The other thing I, I wanted to do better was to use policy research on the benefits of ethnic studies. And so we used a study that was done by Stanford in 2016, and then Professor Christian Sleater had a study, and we started using that to boost and bolster our arguments. And also, I wanted to make our legislation bipartisan to show the nation that we could have Democrats and Republicans supporting ethnic studies legislation in places like California. Next slide. So the, the research was really important because this is where, as a policymaker, I also needed to educate my fellow legislators, the senators and the state assembly members. And so the Stanford study was one of those that we could really show the positive benefits for high school students who take ethnic studies, which the study showed that attendance increased, GPAs increased, and also credits earned during high school also increased. So this was really a powerful tool that I could use as a state legislator. Next slide. So finally, in 2016, just a little bit over four years ago, Governor Jerry Brown decides to sign the first uh, bill on ethnic studies, and it was only on the curriculum. It created the first statewide model curriculum in the nation, and we knew that we couldn't get everything we wanted at once, so we left the fight for a high school graduation requirement for another day. Next slide. And these are the, the numerous news articles locally and throughout the nation talking about the legislation the governor just signed. But it really set off something else across our nation. Next slide, please. If, first of all, the following year in April 2017, out of all states, Indiana, by a Republican governor, Eric Holcomb, signs a bill to require all public high schools to offer an ethnic studies course starting that same year. That was the first in the nation. Next slide. A few months after that, in Oregon, Democratic Governor Kate Brown signs the first bill to integrate ethnic studies in K through 12 schools starting in 2021, this, this year. Next slide, please. And most recently, last December, Governor Lamont was um, announced that Connecticut became the first state in the nation to require high schools to provide courses in black and Latino studies, another first there as well. So next slide. So back to California, this is where we're at this year. Um, we, we were not giving up and we got a new author, my friend, assembly member, Jose Medina, who was himself a high school ethnic studies teacher. Um, he has introduced AB 101 to make California the first state to require ethnic studies as a, as a, for graduation. And we are fortunate that we got the strong support of state superintendent, Tony Thurman. And we hope that by September, Governor Gavin Newsom will be the first governor to sign that into law. Next slide, next slide. So the lessons learned in California, first of all, it's persistence pays off. It's about keeping your eyes on the prize, never giving up, um, pushing year after year, no matter how long it takes. But we also know that policymaking is where you can make good social change truly happen, where it can impact the lives of millions of people. In California, 40 million residents and millions of students in our public schools. We also learned that you have to continue to organize with the grassroots, the community, the youth, and also utilizing research and data to make your strong arguments in places.
places like Sacramento. We also learned that we had to build multiracial and bipartisan coalitions because we felt that that was a more powerful way to get our goal across the finish line. And lastly, remember, always remember that powerful organizing is making good ideas into reality in your schools, your community, and in your state. Next slide. So back to California, we, our struggling is continue here. We hope that you would wish us luck because we know that it's not a matter of if ethnic studies will become law, it's a matter of when ethnic studies will become a law in our state. And we hope that our efforts in California could help other youth and organizations to organize and also to demand a more inclusive curriculum in your high schools and across your state. So with that, I just wanna encourage you to always remember that yes, it can be done, que si se puede. And I'm glad to be able to share our story in California for just a bit. I will stay to answer some questions on the chat. So thank you for allowing us to just share part of our, our struggles in the state of California. Thank you. Si se puede is right. Thank you so much, Luis, for your labor and love. Your work reminds me of a quote the Queen Maya Angelou once said herself, if you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. <laughs>